Welcome everyone to today's webinar, How Documentation Impacts Financial Health and AR at Surgery Centers. I am Andy Stewart with Becker's ASC Review. We will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into the Q&A box you see on your screen. We're looking forward to hearing your questions. Today's session is being recorded and will be available after the event. You can use the same link you used to log into today's webinar to access the recording. At this time, it is now my pleasure to start today's webinar by introducing our presenters. Dr. Newman is a practicing general surgeon in Gadsden, Alabama, with more than 25 years of experience. He has been on the Physician Advisory Board of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama for 15 years and currently serves as chair. Since 1990, Dr. Newman has traveled domestically and abroad, speaking and publishing extensively on minimally invasive surgery. Over the last 12 years, Dr. Newman has focused on improving the quality and detail of physician documentation. At Nuance, he specializes in CAPD solutions and protecting physician practices by helping them document more completely at the point of care. Dr. Budman has been a Chief Medical Information Officer with over 32 years of clinical experience in leadership in primary care practices, hospital groups, integrated delivery networks, and multi-hospital systems. Currently, he is a full-time physician executive at Nuance. He is board certified in family medicine and clinical informatics. In addition, Dr. Budman was a clinical professor of family medicine at UC Irvine, teaching with a teaching award from his students. He has extensive experience in utilization review and clinical documentation excellence. At Nuance, Dr. Budman adds valuable experience to assist physicians and organizations leveraging technology for efficient and compliant documentation to support billing and coding, case, mis case mix index, and other key metrics for organization success. The use of AI technology can advance physician and organizational performance, reduce burnout, and leverage many, in leverage many efficiencies. His experience with physician leaders and C-suite executives is essential to developing strategies for solution implementation, ongoing support, and customer satisfaction. At this time, I am pleased to turn the floor over to Dr. Budman to begin today's presentation. Thank you very much for that introduction, and to everyone on the line, welcome. For those of you who are uh, being affected by the Arctic blast, I'll try to make this sort of a fireside chat discussion about how to improve documentation and revenue cycle at your surgery centers. And let's dive right into the discussion. So the first thing is using artificial intelligence to address the common problems that we all have in high volume surgery centers. Uh, of course, provider burnout is a big topical subject right now because of the many burdens regulatory and the EHR present to getting proper documentation entered into the record. We know from transcription and typing and coding and regulation is very much of a time-consuming element for our physicians who would rather be taking care of patients and performing procedures. After that, we know that there are enormous number of costs, and those costs lead directly to revenue cycle challenges especially if we don't get that documentation right the first time. So having to do queries or dealing with denials are counterproductive to revenue cycle success. Also, we have the all-important concept of quality because we know that publicly everyone is looking at us, whether it's on Google reviews, Yelp, or any of the large number now of national reviewers that say whether or not we're doing a great job, and we're going to cover that in this discussion. And then, of course, uh, the problem of finalizing reimbursement, whether it's professional charges or facility charges, is every single delay leads to a challenge to our bottom line. And that artificial intelligence that I'm going to cover in today's topic is going to show us how to get ahead of that. Why is this accurate surgical documentation so important? It's to overcome all of those challenges and to provide more efficiency and satisfaction to our physicians because then they can deliver 
better care. And by getting the right documentation right off the bat is so critical to getting those CPT codes, getting those professional codes, and sharing the documentation across the continuum. What that means is getting that op note back very fast, correct, shared in the EHR, and sent off to the office or the consulting physician and the billing folks quickly. We know that it's a very complex system of CPT specificity as well as RVUs and those conversion factors and staying on top of those every year as they change is a very big challenge for organizations. I'm sure everybody on the line here has had to deal with regulatory changes, billing changes, software changes, and having to support that locally. And now most of that is going to be built into the cloud in this particular solution. So when we talk about the many variations of just CPT, uh, it's virtually endless. I mean, look at the 11 different codes for thyroidectomy or eight different ones for pericardial intervention and so on. Having these now available at the fingertip of your physicians, and I apologize if you're hearing road noise in the distance. Uh, it's a little bit of a challenge for myself as well. But um, now you'll have these codes and choices not only assisted by artificial intelligence, but offered up to your physicians right at the time of documentation. <clears throat> Nuances in documentation, for example, here in hernia repair, uh, happen at every single surgery. In other words, making sure that you say, was it incarcerated or not? Was it primary or recurrent? Was it open or laparoscopic? Was it with or without mesh? Each one of these points is critical, and we all know that they get missed. Uh, physicians are human too, surgeons are human too, and sometimes we will miss some of these things. Now this current solution has those reminders built right into the system. <clears throat> Complex procedures like nephrectomies, the same thing. And the important thing to note here is if I just say it's a simple nephrectomy versus more complex, you can see on the right side of the slide here the enormous difference in weighting, uh, and that's W-E-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. The weighting is very critical to proper capture of the coding opportunity, not just for billing, but also to capture the true complexity of the patients you care for. Because obviously simple tonsil tonsillectomies are nowhere near as complex as a nephrectomy with multiple complications, infections, and so on. Now, I mentioned public scorecards. We're all too familiar with these things, but if I don't capture the complexity of a patient so that I actually show what the true expected risk of mortality is for that patient, because that affects the risk of mortality, which is that fractional ratio of expected mortality versus uh, observed mortality, it is viewable by CMS, by these public rating companies. That's why capturing complexity is so important. Because if we truly have very complex patients and it's not shown in the documentation, we're not showing the public how complex our patients really are, as well as the payers. So these details do matter, as you can see right here from a thoracoscopy slide. Is it therapeutic or diagnostic? The MSDRG rating and weighting is much different, and that leads to a significant change in reimbursement. If I can get this done without having to be right at the elbow of the physician because it's built automatically into the software solution? Or does my coder catch it or not? Or even look at it from this perspective? Does my coder have time to look at every single line of every single op note every single day? Now the computer through artificial intelligence and natural language processing is able to read those notes and provide the the sophistication and the digital suggestion to the physician exactly at the time of creating the note. 
Where that's important means the next day after my surgeon has done another 10 or 20 cases, in some cases, doesn't have to go back into their memory and try to find that patient because it gets coded in real time as the, as the note is being done by the physician. <clears throat> Diagnosis specificity impacts these assignments. And you can see here on the left side of the screen where it's showing the pre- and post-operative diagnosis procedure performed in the surgeon, the solution is reminding me right there, pick the correct uh, type of surgery that was performed. In other words, was it <clears throat> acute with other complications or not? And the proper listings are there based on current coding and clinical guidelines. Then I can sign the correct acute appendicitis with or without peritonitis and capture that weighting. It also affects the geometric length of stay because obviously more complex cases are harder to take care of and can spend more time in the hospital. And if I miss that, I'm gonna go over that geometric length of stay. <clears throat> Diagnosis specificity now being demonstrated in the cholelithiasis, cholecystitis venue. You see on the left side, now I've got it all listed at my fingertips so I can pr accurately pick very quickly the correct complexity of the case for that cholecystitis case. And on the right side, you can see how with calculus and with other obstruction, how significantly that changes the assignment of the MSDRG. This even extends to uh, commercial payers, as you can see here. What's important now on the left side of this slide is this is a snippet of the cloud-based surgical documentation, CAPD, as we call it, computer-assisted physician documentation tool, where I literally have a checklist that's formatted on the left, and if I have a green mark, then I have satisfied the requirements for that note, whether it's for uh, JCO or DNV or certain payers, and if I have a red triangle, it says I have not satisfied the requirements to document this case. And I simply go down step by step. <clears throat> In the middle, you can see what the structured documentation looks like when I accurately document my procedure. <clears throat> Excuse me for uh, losing my voice there for a second. <clears throat> and on the right side of the slide, you can see it's reminding me what are the critical elements that I need to document for this particular procedure. For example, the laterality. We hear this all the time when we're CDI professionals. Don't forget to put whether it's right or left. Don't forget whether it's acute or chronic. Are there complicating uh, portions of this surgery like an elevated BMI? Did I remove tissue and send it to pathology? all critical requirements, again, now they're built right there in, in the workflow of completing the op note. Also, it tells us, and it says here on the right side, relevant guidance, guidance to help us keep up with ever-changing guidelines and requirements. It will tell us, based on the procedure chosen, whether or not it satisfies <clears throat> a Medicare inpatient-only procedure restriction. <clears throat> so I don't have to remember in my brain because the artificial intelligence and the algorithms built into the, to the coding of the software are telling me whether it is or it is not. Again, you're also seeing on the left side of the screen the checklist to satisfy the questions to complete the documentation, and in the middle of the screen, again, is what that op note format looks like. And that's the nice thing about having <clears throat> a standardized op note format is regardless of my surgical subspecialty, as a coder, a biller, a documenter, or anyone looking at quality, I'm always going to find the pre- and post-operative diagnosis in the same place, technique, complications, and so on. In other words, everyone will have the same information in the same place. We have this very nice, neat, organized operative note.
<clears throat> we all know the, the, the documentation challenges in the surgical environment. As I mentioned before, regulatory burden, time and burnout, capturing care quality, and currently in our multi-step process, we're going to do surgery. We may scribble a post-op note. I still consult on places across the country that do brief op notes on paper, or they pick up dictation. You have to wait around for turnaround time. I actually consulted on a place that was still, in some cases, either having transcription delayed up to two weeks, and in some cases, the audio files were unreadable or even lost, something we definitely don't want. Then come those downstream coding queries waiting for the physician to clarify, and I'm sure that everyone has had to deal with delinquencies and chasing down physicians, and as surgeons and physicians like say, oh, I'm waiting for a love letter from HIM or the coding department. Nobody wants to get those love letters. We want to make sure the documentation is fully done and signed off, and with this program, when I consult with physicians, because it also has a mobile platform, is the ability to sign off these notes and be done, fully written, documented, codified, and sent back to the EHR without another headache, it is an enormous boon to your, your surgeons. <clears throat> the surgical CAPD workflow can literally be done in less than 90 seconds, and seeing is believing. Let me go through it very quickly. Uh, it's showing you here uh, basically what, that when the surgeon is done, they can jump into the software program, complete an accurate op note, very little to no edits, no transcription edits or lag time for transcription to come back, virtually eliminating coding queries, and then having the pro fee and CPTs picked up by artificial intelligence and natural language processing by reading through the note and assigning the codes, which are, by the way, reviewed by the physician before they're signed off so that the veracity and review of the note is done by the physician who signs it. <clears throat> and then it goes to the medical record immediately, the surgeon's office, the consulting physician's office as well. We often hear, well, what happened? Who got that downstream? And now it gets sent through the interface literally immediately at the time it's signed. And then, of course, the financial impact of a workflow like this for accurate re reimbursement, avoiding queries and delinquencies, and uh, virtually eliminating transcription costs. I recently worked with a surgical center in Arizona, <clears throat> and when I went out there the first time, the CEO told me, oh, my podiatrist isn't going to do this. My ophthalmologist isn't going to do this. And I contacted them about two weeks after go live, and they literally were at 100%. There was one single report in two weeks that didn't get done. Uh, so these are like stunning adoption numbers. And you don't want to force your physicians to do it. You want to compel them. And when your surgeons see the other doctors uh, finishing their op notes and being done and going about their day, they take notice of that. And then they talk about it in... Uh, when they're scrubbing in and they talk about it at their meetings, that this software solution has alleviated them so many headaches. So then they are compelled to use it because they see their, their colleagues doing so well with the program. Surgical guidance, <clears throat> again, allows that capture of procedural detail <clears throat> and finish off the communication, getting it signed and doing this Complete and accurate coding, again, by following the stepwise process on the left side. And, and these factors that are summarized on the right that improves the surgeon's imper, uh, experience stays ahead of these uh, many, many rules that change on an an, annual basis. <clears throat> and, of course, for the bottom line, driving these better outcomes that are not just dollars and cents, but physician satisfaction, HCAP scores, and these various quality measures. On the desktop, the way this solution works, surgical CAPD, is, as I noted, to create the note, it tracks the incomplete and completed items, 
by these icons on the far left. Again, this structured and standardized operative report workflow <coughs> that's very easy to learn. <clears throat> Another element here is if you have the proper interfaces with your EHR, and it's agnostic to Cerner, Epic, Meditech, all scripts, doesn't matter, is if you have the interfaces built, many of these things will already be pre-populated for your surgeon so they can concentrate on recording the technique and findings of that, of that um, procedure. And you also see integrated here the Dragon toolbar, so they have voice recognition built in and at any time in any one of these fields that the surgeon needs to provide additional narrative, they can simply turn on Dragon and use their voice to, to be transcribing in real time. <clears throat> and this surgical CAPD, which was formerly known as Venkari, actually learns the common elements for your surgeons so that the next time they come back into the program, it understands and pro provides for them the proper selections based on frequency. So if I'm doing, say, intraocular lens implants or a plantar fascia procedure or any one of a number of knee, hip, ear, you name it, those common ambulatory procedures, it will remember my choices. So it makes it even faster and more efficient for my surgeons to complete those operative notes accurately and correctly. <clears throat> On the mobile platform as well, and you can see these are some renderings of some screenshots that I can on the fly, and surgeons, when they're very busy, pick up their phone, complete their operative note, even using speech and voice recognition within that note, because Dragon can be embedded in it as well, and to bring in automated templates and descriptions, sign them off on the fly while they're in the car running off to see their next patient is an invaluable asset. And as well, securely and encrypted through the cloud, you can even add in uh, surgical uh, photographs as well as wounds so that they are uh, embedded photographs and JPEGs within the procedure note. And I'll show you those in a, mo in a moment. <clears throat> Nuanced surgical guidance, again, allows you and facilitates the efficiency to capture this procedural detail. And this is how it works. Once again, uh, building that standardized note from top to bottom, completing the check boxes, so I go from green to yellow to red. Yellow means it's optional and you may want to answer it. Red means you do need to answer it. <clears throat> and again, as I get everything complete, everything starts turning green, building this nice standardized note, filling in the things for compliance need. As you can see here, the diagnosis, uh, anesthesiologist, assistants, and so on, technique used. Here's the addition of uh, surgical photographs or wound care photographs. Again, securely through the cloud. Nothing is stored on the device. Finishing off my checklist of items until I'm almost complete. Capturing complications, blood loss, transfer to the PACU, anything uh, that's sent off to pathology, what sort of dressings were used. And then very uh, efficiently getting a full technique and included with this program are hundreds, if not thousands of surgical templates on all the things I've already discussed, like hip, knee, eye, ear, skin, joint, you name it so I can use standardized templates and adapt them to my own use, or I can create my own surgical templates and save them into the system to be used for myself specifically. So it has a lot of, of um, latitude for how I want to use the program. <clears throat> when 
I finish off the note and everything's finally turned green, and I wanted to show you the uh, CPT codes. I think it's coming up here in a moment. But in the long run, what we find, and over dozens and dozens of implementations of this software platform, is we do literally see op notes being done in 90 seconds or less. The time to bill uh, significantly reduced at this point, uh, about two hours or less, with virtual elimination of DNFB charts. This adoption rate of 85%, I would contend, is actually higher now, probably 90 plus at most of the sites because we're very good at implementing it. And we have a very strong uh, implementation team that follows a checklist and works directly with your center people and your surgeons to achieve these high adoption rates in a very short period of time, virtually eliminating uh, retrospective queries. Uh, drastically reducing denial rates, and as I said before, by following the templated format and the AI tools and the coding guidelines built in, being 100% regulatory compliant with our surgical notes. I don't know if Dr. Newman has joined us yet on the line, and when he does join us, yeah. he'll be able to help, I'm, I'm help here. us out. Ah, very good. Uh, I'm uh, here. Dr. Newman, Dr. Newman, please uh, chime in, and I can also <laughs> go back to any any slides that you would like to accentuate. Sure. Well, I apologize for being late. I'm traveling and just got on the ground, so and I know Dr. Budman's done a fine job covering covering what we do. Um, the reality is, is that surgeons um, often know the answers to questions; they just don't know the questions and. I'm a general surgeon. I've been in practice for 26 years uh, using this tool for the, for the last 13. And I, I found it invaluable to be able to navigate the, the coding changes that are occurring uh, today, regardless of the size of your facility, whether it's outpatient or inpatient surgery. A tool that's built like this is, is meant to accommodate the mundane procedures uh, as well as the very complicated procedures. And so, I know that uh, this slide presentation has gone through much of the detail, um, in including the fact that very often there are many, many more CPT codes that are available to a surgeon. Surgeons are creatures of habit, and most of what they do um, is, is a learned behavior, although none of the surgeons were actually trained to dictate op notes. And so the whole coding and documentation world was something that um, essentially all of us learned on the fly. And that's okay perhaps 30, 40 years ago, but today we're in an increasingly analytic world that makes detail very, very important. And so I think we're very proud that this tool is able to drill down to specific um, coding issues that face every surgeon. So uh, one of the examples, the late examples here was debridement. Debridement has, happens to be one of the most heavily rack audited procedures in the United States. And one of the issues is that um, lots of different surgeons do this procedure from general to plastics to orthopedics. And so there's just, there's, there's a whole lot of depth to this product that you can't possibly get in a 30 minute demo. And we certainly would love the opportunity to work with any of you to show you the detail that's inside. So I guess we're gonna do some questions after this. While we're waiting for Thank the you, first Dr. question to come. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you, Dr. Newman and Dr. Budman, for that fantastic presentation. Um, we can now begin today's question and answer session. And for our audience, please submit any questions you have by typing them into the Q&A box you see on your dashboard. We will try to get through as many questions as we have time for. We have actually a lot of great questions that have come in here. Um, the first one that I'll ask is, how is a rule-based guidance tool different than dictation, and why is it better? So I, I'll take that one since I'm the surgeon on the line. Uh, the reality, as I mentioned a minute ago, was surgeons uh, are busy doing surgery. I mean, we view what we produce as the Mona Lisa, and, and yet we're 
producing crayon drawings. Very often, if you go back retrospectively and look at what what you actually dictated, it, it doesn't necessarily cover the detail that's necessary. And as I mentioned earlier, we, we typically know the answers to the questions of any procedure we're doing. We just don't know exactly what coding and, and, uh, and the payers are looking for. And so in, in the course of practicing surgery, you know, you're, you're not busy learning this kind of stuff. And uh, when you come down to looking at the impact that it has on your facility and your personal bottom line, it, 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 it's truly eye-opening. Uh, because of some of the slides earlier, I believe we covered the number of procedures and how DRG is impacted. So, you know, appendicitis is a great example. It's done in virtually every hospital in the United States, and, and the language that you use to describe that can be quite different from one case to the other. And, in fact, it's accurate to say that you did an ap uh, appendectomy for appendicitis, but if you leave out acute appendicitis or appendicitis with peritonitis, you know, that's a very costly mistake for the facility and for your reputation. So, Dr. Budman? The other thing I would add to that, Dr. Newman, is imagine over the span of your lifetime the number of times you would have to pick up the phone and speak from beginning to end and how much time it took to discuss that acute appendicitis and the possibility of missing one of those specifiers or complexities. And now with uh, a form-driven, rules-based AI engine, just providing the narrative differences and very quickly being reminded of the complexities and completing it in less than 90 seconds without having to repeat yourself a thousand times over your course of your career would be just an enormous benefit to surgeons. One, one uh, other analogy is TurboTax. I mean, you know, if you ask me, how do you go pay your taxes? I really would have no clue without form following some form or calling my accountant. And so, this uh, the rules-based engine, in my opinion, is is the great uh, distinguishing factor for any of the software tools that have artificial intelligence or machine learning built in, which is something that we believe very strongly in here. Thank you both for offering that clarity and those great points. So the next question that we have that came in, um, what can you do to help teach coding to surgeons that don't seem to care? Well, I, you know, once again, I, I think it all boils down to dollars and cents. I mean, this is a difficult uh, uh, world that we practice in, and, you know, it, it, our, our reimbursements are getting cut on a regular basis, and so, um, you know, the, the hard thing is is that we can argue with third-party payers or Medicare and describe that we're not getting paid enough to do what we do, but it, by the, in the same token, you're not really paying attention to the amount of money that you lose when you don't cover the bases with your documentation. So, you know, obviously there's surgeons that are so busy that they, they don't feel like there's any way to survive, but that's the benefit of having a system that works concurrently. This is real-time documentation. This is meant to occur as the procedure is being carried out. You know, me personally, you know, when I when I do this, uh, when I use this tool, I'm usually keying up my planned operation, reviewing what's wrong with the patient, what their secondary diagnoses are. I do that before while the patient's going to sleep. And when I when the patient wakes up and I take my gloves off, that's that's where we get the you know, 45 to 90 seconds to finish it. So it's it's really magic. It's taking advantage of time that's typically lost in a surgeon's busy day. I would also add to that response that rather than teaching coding and trying to figure out what the CPT codes are, is when the artificial intelligence reads the entire note and assigns the selection of CPT codes, then the physician doesn't have to memorize the rule book or work off a of memory. They will see what the selections are and pick the correct complexity and procedure right there because it's presented to them. Yes, and I, and I agree point. with that. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, it's just, it is, no, it's a great point. And, and being able to see what your options are is, is critical. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, coding is actually 
kind of a team event. You know, one of the things that we promote is that having this type of tool visible to me and my anesthesia team and the nurses, you know, they begin to understand the, the, the critical importance of appropriate coding. You know, we're, we're not in favor of upcoding or downcoding. We're in favor of appropriate coding. And, and when you do it properly the first time, you eliminate the queries and the financial losses associated with that practice. Uh, one other interesting thing is I've been in hundreds of hospitals in my career, but I've only been in one hospital ever that had a coding person who actually resided in post-op to help the surgeons. Now with the use of software, that coder is built right into the computer desktop. That's really interesting. Thanks for clearing that up and providing some insight there. We have another audience member who is wondering, how does your AI solution integrate with the major EMR systems like Epic and Cerner? So either Dr. Newman or Dr. myself can answer that. Because this is cloud-based and it's reading based on the documentation held within Surgical CAPD, it works with virtually any EHR out there. Dr. Newman, do you want to tail on that? Sure. Sure. I, you know, the, because we are agnostic to the vendor um, that we support, um, we, we can actually uh, provide this note uh, via HL7 interface or a PDF or text message back to your parent software. You know, I frequently, I frequently tell people that the parent softwares, their suitcases where you put your stuff, and that we're a dry cleaner. We want to improve the documentation. We want to be the optimum physician uh, interface uh, to have a user experience where the doctors do not object to learning how to code. But you don't have to, as Dr. Budman alluded to, you don't have to know the coding rules because this tool starts remembering who you are. You know, one of the insistence uh, uh, of this product when we were when it was being built is that it actually memorizes who's using it. So each time a surgeon uses this tool, it becomes a little bit smarter because it's patterning what you do. So every general surgery account may be a little different. If you do just breast surgery, it's going to focus on breast. If you do heart surgery and all you do is heart bypass and not thoracic, it's going to focus on that. So the tool gets smarter and smarter as you use it. Let me also add for the folks who might be uh, gnashing their teeth a little bit when I said cloud-based, is let me assure you that we are built on Microsoft Azure platform with the utmost security. And in terms of technology uptime and turnaround, I'm amazed when I use this product from a Wi-Fi connection in the middle of nowhere through the cloud and getting response times in less than a second, literally a split second. Uh, the, the technology is very strong, very secure, and encrypted. Great. Thanks for that clarity. Uh, we have another audience member who wants to know, can you demonstrate the return on investment to the surgeon? Lucian, do you have an answer for that one? Yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have produced some white papers in the past. Uh, I can tell you at my own office, uh, with five surgeons, we increased our billing for just skin lesions and soft tissue masses by almost $75,000 in one year. And so, you know, the reality is is that there, there, there's something that I refer to as the patient you never see. And so if you, if you really think about it, the patients who have insurance and they're paying their bills and that will behave in the post-op period and try to take care of themselves, those are the same people that are going to go to software uh, sites um, to look for the best doctors and the best hospitals. And so, you know, because of that, I feel like it's imperative for doctors to protect themselves by making sure they're painting the exact severity of illness of that patient and painting the right picture with accuracy, uh, because it is those doctors. If you're not doing that, you're gonna you're gonna fall in the court of public opinion. You may be you may think you're busy, and then one day you wake up and 
all the good patients are gone. So that's a kind of a twist on that concept. And I would also like to add to that, and this is a, a soft, but everyone on this line probably knows can be a painful ROI, is the fact that my surgeons no longer have to do a brief op note, but complete their full and compliant op note and have it signed off without ever having to go back to it is an enormous ROI for your surgeons. That's great. Thank you for clarifying and providing those details. Um, we have kind of touched on this briefly, but I'd like uh, for this audience member's question to get a little bit more deeply into this topic. But is this applied to all kinds of surgeries, regardless of the time, complexity, and site? And how does that kind of apply there? Uh, I'll handle that one. Yes. Um, as I mentioned, we work in very small outpatient centers that are single specialty, and we work in university hospitals. And so if you think about a complex operation, it's really a sum of parts. And so very often, you know, I'm, I'm doing procedures that have two or three different codes that might apply. Neurosurgery, uh, where you're doing multi-level cliffs and uh, disc repairs, sometimes there's six, seven, eight different uh, procedure codes. But what happens, because this tool memorizes the way you do them, um, we actually are able to create those segmented op notes and paste them together very, very quickly. And so a good example, if I'm doing a colon resection for colon cancer, there's a separate code for takedown of the splenic flexure. Not only that, but we provide diagramming and we provide the, the information that the, uh, the 3M encoders and the different encoders are using to look at our notes. And so because of that, you know, it does save from the later queries. Um, so, uh, you know, as I, as I mentioned, operations, even, even the most complex ones, are typically a sum of, you know, basic maneuvers that we've been doing for many, many years. Another interesting anecdote is I worked with a hospital on the East Coast that had multiple surgical specialties. We're using surgical CAPD. They had cardiovascular, orthopedics, trauma, general surgery, you name it. And they were acquired by a larger hospital system. And the acquirer came in and said, we're going to sunset surgical CAPD. And you know that surgeons love a software program. And they said, uh-uh, no way. We are not giving this up. Um, to take software that is so satisfying to physicians that they refuse to give it up. We know that they've got their talons in that dictaphone or that telephone, but like I said earlier, when they're compelled to use something that provides them with tremendous efficiency and satisfaction that they don't want to give it up, you know that you've got a good software program. Great. That was a really interesting anecdote. Thank you. We have another audience member who wants to know, do you see the tool as leading to higher reimbursement inappropriately? Uh, so absolutely not. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I would say absolutely not. That's one of, the, one of the assistances that we have, and one of the things that I believe very strongly is that this type of information that we're creating is shared with the entire operative theater, um, it's immediately viewable by coding. And so, you know, the reality is, is that there's nothing stopping a physician from going and dictating something that's not true. Uh, the old way didn't stop that. In my opinion, this actually improves the entire concept of uh, catching fraudulent providers. And that's obviously not why it's built, but it's built to be a very transparent tool that educates everyone that uses it. So I think if you do get better reimbursement because of it, and I believe that the physician and the hospital certainly will, it's because they've left the low-hanging fruit in the past and now they're able to grab it. Let me add a couple things about our technology and compliance as well. First of all, our artificial intelligence would never make a suggestion that is not based on evidence found within the chart. Number two is when we build our artificial intelligence tools, 
they're tiered into three levels and not until we get to the highest level of three and we feel that the precision is accurate above an 80% level would we even present an option for an answer. In other words, if it was acute appendicitis and there was no documentation within there to suggest peritonitis or any of the other complications or additional techniques that uh, Dr. Newman alluded to, we would not show it. Now, would a physician put that in by themselves like Dr. Newman alluded to? Yes, they possibly could, but our solution would not do that. And I would, I would add, you know, one of the things that I feel very strongly about is as time goes on, photographic evidence is going to become increasingly valuable and increasingly uh, desired. And so I actually typically take intraoperative photographs of wounds, of debridements, of cancers, of peritonitis, and insert that straight onto my op note. You, you viewed the, the uh, foot debridement uh, that you saw there, and so nobody could go back and look at that chart and think that that wasn't a warranted procedure. And so just, just in the same manner, I think that physicians ought to become better at documenting. And, you know, all of us have, you know, cell phones. We have a mobile app that takes a photograph. It doesn't go on your phone. It goes into this application seamlessly, and you're able to reproduce that for any third-party reviewer that's behind you. And yet, Dr. Newman, I did show them the ability to add those uh, surgical photographs. Great. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. Thank you. Thank you both so much for that helpful response. It looks like that is all the time we have for today. I want to thank both Dr. Newman and Dr. Budman for their excellent presentation and Nuance for sponsoring today's webinar. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to having you join us for future webinars. Thank you.